four. Okay. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, we are going live. Welcome to Indiegogo's uh, very first, uh, well, first for now, uh, cr uh, crowdfunding uh, Google Hangout in which we're going to be talking about how to run a successful campaign on Indiegogo for various uh, projects and types. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be your host, John Tregonis. Uh, I am Indiegogo's campaign specialist. I, I uh, specialize in film campaigns, video campaigns, comic books, all those kinds of cool creative projects. And uh, I'm also you know, a writer and all that good stuff. Uh, and today, our guest is, uh, is a writer as well. Uh, and I'm very happy to be able to, uh, to announce him. He had a very successful campaign on Indiegogo. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much. That's, that's kind of the, the whole thing, is I want our, our guests to speak uh, mostly on, on this. But I'll be just asking some interesting questions that I think you guys will definitely benefit from. So uh, I'm just going to have uh, our, our guest, Adam, uh, give a quick little introduction, if you can, about uh, you know, who you are and, and you know, what your passions are and what your project was on Indiegogo. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Adam Smiley Pozwalski. I'm a writer based in San Francisco, California. Um, I'm 30 years old. I grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, and I uh, did a project on Indiegogo called The Quarter Life Breakthrough, which really started with my personal story of uh, leaving a job I wasn't happy in in Washington, D.C., uh, moving to the West Coast because I wanted to start freelance writing. Um, and really working on projects that really meant to me a lot to me. So my book is all about uh, finding meaningful work and the journey for millennials to find meaningful work. Um, I think uh, a lot of great projects, whether they're crowdfunded or not, um, start with a good idea, and a good idea comes from a personal story. Um, it comes from your journey, what you've lived through, uh, your own experiences in life. So my book, um, The Quarter Life Breakthrough, came out of my own uh, turning um, a period that a lot of people call the quarter life crisis, which is this 20 to 30 something, I'm figuring out what to do with my life, how to make a living, how to pay my bills, how to pay student loans, how to get a job, um, turning that kind of period, which is usually treated by the media as a very kind of negative, uh, millennials don't know what they're doing time into a positive, a moment of possibility and opportunity. Um, and I decided to write a book uh, about that story and I decided uh, to use Indiegogo as my platform. Great, that is excellent. And, and just jumping right in, uh, like what, I mean just what, why did you choose Indiegogo? What was, uh, what, did, what did Indiegogo offer that, that you knew you could make use of to get your book out there to the, to the crowd? Yeah, well, at first, you know, there was a there was a major need for this for this book. Um, I was writing about this kind of quarter life crisis, millennials trying to figure out what to do. Uh, twenty five percent of twenty five to thirty five year olds are currently not working. Um, many uh, twenty and thirty somethings are unemployed or underemployed. Um, and I knew that by using Indiegogo, um, I could reach a global audience. Um, this is actually something that's not just endemic to the United States. It's a global issue, uh, people finding work. And Indiegogo um, is a global platform that's open to all, um, unlike some other uh, platforms that are kind of restricted to a mostly U.S. audience. I wanted to be able to reach people throughout the, throughout the world. Um, and it was pretty amazing when I started to see people buying copies of my book and supporting my campaign that were in India and Iceland and South Africa and Brazil and all these places. It was really amazing. Um, there are also, uh, Indiegogo provided a, a, a platform that offered very few restrictions um, in terms of what was, uh, you know, in terms of what types of projects they allow. Um, I have looked into other platforms that kind of said, oh, you can't do self-help projects or you can't do other projects. And Indiegogo, um, you know, it's like, it, it was really a, you know, within a couple hours I had my campaign up there. So it was really quick. Um, and another really important piece for me was the flexible funding campaign. So on Indiegogo, you can um, set a goal that's flexible funding. So say you don't reach your goal um, or you come close, you still get to keep the money that you do raise, which I think is really important because running a, a crowdfunding campaign is a lot of work. Um, 
a ton of prep, and the worst thing that would to happen is say you do all this this prep, and then you kind of get to the fourth week, and you're close, but you don't get the money, and it's kind of like, oh, that's that would suck. So uh, I was I was really excited about that aspect of Indiegogo. Excellent! Wow, that is that is really awesome. And and you know, I love what you said about like you know the fact that you wanted everything to be global. I mean, you know, you look at millennials. You know, it's not just an American thing. It's you know, this is the world. Why right. not reach out to the world, and why not have the opportunity to reach the world uh, with your with your dreams, right? I mean, it's great. Yeah. Um, what um, you know, another kind of question that I've got uh, in in my head is like, what 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 made you know that this particular project, you know, quarter life breakthrough, what, what made you think that it was right for crowdfunding? I mean, I think it's it's pretty simple. You have to talk to people about your idea. You have to vet the idea with, with the people you know, and it starts with your community, your friends and family, um, and the people you talk to. Um, I started talking to people about, um, you know, I, I actually am a writer, so I have a blog, so I started kind of writing about this topic on my blog, and there was a lot of interest, and I realized, oh, wow, people, this is, it's not just me <laughs> going through this. It's not, I'm not the only person that's crazy. Um, there are people all over the place that are asking these same questions and getting involved in these same the same discussions. So when I started to tell people like, "Hey, like I'm thinking about turning turning some of my blog posts and and this in this area into a book, what do you think?" You know, I'm I'm thinking of writing this book like the quarter life breakthrough, flipping this idea of the crisis into a positive. People are like, "Oh, that's a great idea. You got to do it." Um, so it's, it was really just talking to people and, and getting the word out and being like, and people kind of responding with positive feedback. That's yeah, I, I think it's really important when you have an idea, um, if you're thinking about crowdfunding, to, to before you even crowdfund or before you even think about that, to, to talk to people about the idea and see if they're interested. Do they get excited about it um, when you talk to them? Because that, at the end of the day, that's really what's going to encourage people to come to your site and then encourage people to, to donate to your campaign and support your campaign is if they're excited about it. And you could, you could do that as easily as by sending out an email or a Facebook post by, hey, I'm thinking about this. What do you all think? Um, any criticism, any feedback, um, anyone interested in having coffee and talking about this more? Because you get those ideas right off the bat. It's pretty simple to do that. Yeah, it's great that you're very, you're so open to that. I mean, you know, I always tell people, you know, when I, I, I you know, I give uh, people advice all day long about how to run campaigns, and the first thing I say is you've got to be part of the community, and we can't be afraid to, like, reach out to them and, and ask them straight up, like, hey, what do you think? If I, if I launched a campaign on Indiegogo, is this going to be something you're going to be a part of? You'd be surprised what kind of information you get from them. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised, but, like, the general public, you know, we, we tend sometimes not to want to do that. We feel like we're giving them too much too soon. But at the end of the day, when you have a project like this, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but it's it's kind of like it, it encompasses the whole of, of the community right there to, yeah. to make them a part of it. Oh, I mean, I, I, I always think that crowdfunding is an exercise in community building. Uh, you're building you're building a movement of people that support your idea, that support your project, and whether that's a product idea, whether it's a film, whether it's a book, whether it's a uh, you know you're 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 building an app um, or it's a nonprofit cause or you know a call to action. You're building a community of people that care about what you're doing. Um, so if you can't talk to people about what you're doing and build that community offline, um, it really defeats the whole purpose. Um, and you know, and that doesn't mean you have to be an extrovert and going around, you know, bragging about what you're doing at all. No, it just means you have to kind of build people that care about what you're doing. If you're really interested um, in urban gardening, you find fans that are, you know, the people that are really interested in urban gardening, right? Yep. If you're all about, you know, how to use animation, find the people that are fanatics about animation. So find your kind of your, your army of supporters, your people that are really fans, your diehards that will support you. And I would do that before you even um, start a crowdfunding campaign because those are the people that are going to really champion your campaign. Those are the people that are going to share it with their networks. Um, they're your early, your early adopters and your fans. So you have to build that community. Um, and you can do that even if you don't have a, you know, you don't have to have a, a major platform. You don't have to have thousands of Twitter followers already. You just have to be willing to share your idea and talk about it. And, and I think really the point about um, 
taking criticism is important. My idea and, and how the book has evolved has shifted based on the process of using Indiegogo and doing crowdfunding. I started out writing a, a book in a certain way, and based on the feedback I got and all my conversations with people, I kind of decided to almost rewrite the whole book because it was wow. it's more what people actually wanted. So I think you have to be open to, you know, your, your community is everything, and you have to be open to listening to your community for how your project takes shape. That's really exciting. I, yeah, to be able to, to change your, your book, your, your kind of, you know, purpose based on that immediate real-time feedback from, from the crowd. Exactly. That together. That's, that's phenomenal. Um, it, you know, just going back to the, the community building, because this is also something that I always talk about, um, and I feel like you know I feel like a broken record sometimes about telling people to build their audience and their community beforehand. You you focused on a lot of that. How much time did you spend on the 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 pre-launch work? I guess after you vet the idea and you said this is probably the right idea. How much time did you actually spend gathering this support? Um. Many, <laughs> many hours, uh, many weeks, um, several months at least. Um, I, w I would say that, you know, in a way it's kind of like the project had, the project was uh, kind of a year long in the making because I had talked to so many people and written blog posts, but definitely a couple months of, of pre-launch strategy um, and talking to people and leveraging my network. Um, you know, I would definitely recommend um, you know, coming up with email lists of, of both friends and family beforehand, supporters, um, relevant people that are doing similar work, uh, you know, reaching out to people on, on social networks, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, on all those things that everyone al always tells you. Um, but definitely, the more work you do um, in advance, the easier it's going to be uh, for your launch and during your campaign, and the more successful your project is going to be. That's that's one of those things that's you know it's an obvious sports metaphor or metaphor for life. The more practice and more kind of prep you put in, the better the result is going to be. Obviously, um, so I would really I would really encourage people to you know there's always this initial this urge of you want to you want to launch right away. You you want to reach your goal and you want to get. The, the money and you want to you know be finished with the project but the truth is you know all great works of art and all great projects take time and and, and practice and patience so the more work you do on the front end the, the better off you're going to be and that's the timeline is going to be different for everyone depending on the project some people can do that in a couple of weeks some people might take a couple of years uh, frankly or or at least you know I know people that have prepped a, a launch of a crowdfunding campaign that was really the launch of their business um, for almost a year, <laughs> wow. um, you know, not necessarily full time, but they, they're working on it, you know, off and on throughout that year, and and in doing so, they're building their business, so it works. Um, for some people that are doing a very um, simple project, it could just be a couple a couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. I said I said wow initially um, at like you know a few years, but you know I'm I'm one to talk. I when I ran my campaign, I spent like nine months just building my network, and I didn't even realize I was building a network. I was just kind of bored, and I was talking to people on on Twitter and Facebook about movies, and and it kind of built up. And then like nine months later, I find out about this awesome thing called you know Indiegogo, and I was like, ooh, does this work? Cool. Uh, right. And I had all that, I had that great network built up, so it really does. But, you know, I mean, hey, if you need two months, you do two months. You need, you need a little time, you, you need a little time. Right. Um, aside from... Right. And, 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 go for okay. it. No, no, go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, uh, it's not like, you know, that, that, those, that nine months of work is not just for the crowdfunding campaign, it's for the film as a whole. So it's kind of all that work is going towards something greater than just the crowdfunding campaign. So it's all worth it in the end, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, another, you know, another brief bit um, is, like, uh, the benefits outside of money. Because you obviously raised, like, a ton of money. You went over your goal. What was it? It was, like, $9,000, right? You wanted, and you ended up getting, like, twelve something uh, My goal was 9000 and I and I raised almost 13000 That's excellent. Um, I mean, what other things did you did you take out of it, you know, besides the two big ones, which is community and, uh, and the, the funding to, to actually make this project happen? 
Um, the benefits of of of, uh, of the campaign, yeah. Well, definitely, you know, the community. So for me, you know, the it, the project was I needed I did need the money to you know to self publish this book. Um, so obviously the money is great, but really by getting the community, I I got fans, I got people that are actually excited that are going to share the book, that are going to buy the book, that are going to help me get the book to other audiences. So that's actually way more important. I always tell people that the, the money is a, a small piece of why you should do a crowdfunding campaign. Um, it's really to build this network and this community of people um, that, that believe in what you're doing. But I think what I, I mentioned this earlier, the feedback that I got from the process was invaluable. Um, the criticism I got, the direction I got of how to change the project is basically what's shaping my book. So crowdfunding is an amazing way to test your idea. And testing your idea sometimes means you actually need to change your idea or, or course correct and use that feedback in real time. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an invaluable exercise in kind of testing if your idea resonates and, and figuring it out how, who the right audience is. So by doing a crowdfunding campaign, I actually realize now who I'm actually marketing the book to, um, who the book is for. Um, mm -hmm. Also, obviously, like I, I got some press, which is a great uh, a great benefit of, of using Love Indiegogo. That. I got featured on the Indiegogo homepage um, and in the blog, and then you know got 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 featured in a couple publications um, with 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 the book, which is huge for me for my career for the book as a future um, and for me as a writer. So that's great. Um, I think Indiegogo because it's that kind of global platform. You see a lot of campaigns that are on Indiegogo get featured in news outlets um, and in the media, um, which, is, which is really amazing. Absolutely. And of course, that just you know, continues to build up your, your network and your, and your audience you know, for the future. Yeah. Um, you know, just taking a minute from the vetting of the project, we're going to get back to like kind of what else goes into vetting of you know, whether or not a project is right for a, you know, an Indiegogo campaign. Um, you know, we're talking a lot about networks. How are you using your network now? You know, since it's been after the campaign, what's the what's the relationship like? If I may use that that wonderful term, relationship. Yeah, um, I've I've relied on my my a lot of my Indiegogo supporters to provide feedback um, during the book writing process. Um, I'm yeah. asking many of them to provide um, early reviews of the book uh, when it's finished uh, for Amazon. Um, I, I see my kind of the Indiegogo. Community as the people that made my book possible, quite literally. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of every time I have an idea, I kind of reach out to people in that network um, about, hey, what do you guys think about this? Or you know, I'm, I'm currently now like playing with different taglines for the book. You know, so I'm A/B testing different taglines, and I'm going to reach out to my Indiegogo supporters by saying, hey, you know, please rank these these taglines as the top five taglines. So it's basically they they become like a, my community of um, you know not just market testers but people that actually really believe in my project and are people I trust to provide good feedback. Excellent, love it, <clears throat> love it. And is this is this your first this is your first book that you've done? This is my first book. Yeah. Wow. So this is uh, this not my last. Is First. And and definitely not your last, especially uh, at the way you're you're doing it. You know, you're you're building this this great uh, audience. Now, you know, in thinking of like other books, what are, what are some tips you could maybe give to that would let people know that that crowdfunding through Indiegogo is right for their project? And I'm focusing on what's right, you know, about a project as opposed to like what are key signs that you know this project is not crowdfundable or for Indiegogo. But you know, you can kind of take it either way, but like what are some things that that you would tell somebody that uh, a project would need to have, you know, kind of ready to go to to say yes, this is this is right. This is great. Um, yeah, I I would say that first and foremost, um, I, I think it's it's great to have an audience. Um, an audience for your goal. Uh, if if you're if you're um, just kind of writing a, a story that very few people can relate to, um, that's very personal in a way that like no one that doesn't really apply to others. That will be tough for crowdfunding because again, it's called crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it implies that there's a crowd. Um, so I think it's really important to uh, to have an audience built in. That's going to be easier for some projects than others. 
Um, but to, if, does your project have an audience? Uh, for mine, obviously, the, the audience was millennials, uh, mm -hmm. career changers, um, young people interested in, in finding work with purpose. That's a very specific audience. Um, if, you know, but I think a, a lot of projects do have that audience. I think uh, you need to have a, a realistic goal. Um, I, I, I think it's, un, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to raise $100,000 uh, for their campaign. And, you know, as someone who's self-publishing a book, like, frankly, you don't need $100,000. So if I was seeing, if I saw that campaign and I might be like, well, I, I think that's a little, that's a little ridiculous. Um, I think it's really important to be realistic. Ask for what you need. Um, come up with a, a budget of that makes sense. What do you? Why are you using this? Why are you using this platform? And what do you need? Um, and you know, are you are you um, are you giving something? Are you providing something that people want? I think is really important. Mm -hmm. um, is there a need for for what you're offering? Um, and that can be a book. Um, a, you know, like I said, a nonprofit. Are you are you doing something that people care about? That's relevant to the world. Um, that's you know, that's interesting, um, that makes people get excited, I think is really important. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, is there, is there a clear reason for why you're using crowdfunding? Right, right, because, you know, there's other, other ways, other things you could do, right? I mean, you could just totally, you know, submit right. your manuscript to the publishers and wait. And, and the one thing that I love about, um, you know, crowdfunding in general and, and especially Indiegogo, of course, is is the fact that it's proactive. You you have to go after what you want, and you've got to engage people. It's not. It's the kind of the complete opposite of you know sitting and yeah, you've done the work, you've written a a manuscript, and you've submitted it, and now well, okay, now we wait. And in the time that we're yeah. waiting, who knows what can happen? Somebody else could jump on Indiegogo and make that book first, and they get all the all the credit. So it's kind of like. I don't know, I think there's something to be said about, you know, having the drive, and you definitely seem like a person that has that kind of, you know, a good idea plus the drive that's required to get it done. How important is the drive? The drive is huge. I mean, you know, my book, I tell the story of my own, my own story, but I also tell the story of a lot of different 20 and 30-somethings um, that decided to go out and do something. Some of them started their own businesses, some of them quit their jobs to join companies that that align with their values. Some of them are figuring it all out, but they're doing it. So self-publishing was seemed to fit with what I was going for, right? Crowdfunding fit with what I was going for. This kind of this idea of this hustle, this drive that young people can do what they want, that they don't need to wait for permission from some editor that's 75 years old in New York City that's been, you know, reading manuscripts for 30 years and, you know, is going to look at like Eat their lunch on top of my on top of my book and spill ketchup all over it and like never call me back in two years, right? So I was like, why would I wait two years to get that email when I can just go out and write the book myself um, and publish it myself by by leveraging my network and building a community? So you know, obviously it's a challenge, but you know this this is the world we're living in, and you have to use the tools that are available. Um, and I and I think that drive is huge. I think. A lot of people talk about crowdfunding, but don't again, then don't want to do the work, or, or don't you know have an idea and, and 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 don't want to kind of put in that drive. Drive is huge. Um, I I love I look at a lot of successful campaigns. They work really hard on the front end, really hard on the prep. They build a team, so it's not just one person. You know, you're a filmmaker. You know, I think I used to I used to actually used to work in the film industry. You know, at the end of a film, you for the people that actually sit in the theater, there's about three minutes of scrolling names, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All those people work on the project in some degree. And I think a crowdfunding campaign, we don't think of it that way sometimes because it's one person usually that's, you know, the you know I'm sitting here talking about my, my book, but my project was made possible by a lot of different people. So that drive encompasses being able to get other people to join to join your cause and to join your your team. Um, so I really encourage people, especially with more complex campaigns, um, to find other people to find you know social media folks, uh, teammates, people to help with um, doing the video. You know, I, I I hired my friend who's a great videographer to do the trailer for my 
for my campaign, which I thought was great. Um, so bringing on other people and leveraging their skills is huge. You can't do this alone, like anything. You can't you can't do well alone. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, you can or you could try, but but it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit tough. <laughs> yeah. You you had me you had me rolling sure, here. Sure. Sure. <laughs> with the um, with the the editor thing, I'm wondering if that actually ever happened to you because it happened to me a couple of times. I I still got the ketchup stains. <laughs> um, that's why I just no. <laughs> Um, this is this is really great information. I'm, I'm sure people are taking taking so much out of this uh, right now, and I just want to keep it going a bit longer and, and get some more great stuff out of you, uh, Adam, because it, it really is insightful. And, and I've got a bunch of quotes uh, from you that I need to post on Twitter later because it's just such good stuff, and I'm a terrible multitasker. Um, got to work on that. But um, you know, uh, another kind of question that I know I get from from folks is is about you know getting some press and landing press because it helps. Um, <clears throat> and I think the way I look at it is this kind of starts in the in the vetting phase, even before pre-launch, because for me a lot of this is about having an angle, or what I like to call a gimmick, but gimmick for some reason has like this dirty connotation. I don't know why, but you know, so like having an angle for press. Did you have, I mean, you obviously had an, an audience, possibly an angle, but you can tell me yay or nay on, on that one. And did that help in securing or, or firming up your resolve that this project is right for Indiegogo because I know that I should be able to nab some, some decent press eventually? I mean, did that have anything to do with your process? Yeah, I mean, I think if, if you can if you can sell your story and, and what you're doing to relevant publications early on, um, you know, pre-launch and know that you're going to have press, um, you know, the day you launch or the first couple of days you launch, that's huge. Um, and it's also it, it validates your idea, it, it validates what you're doing and your kind of um, your talent. Um, that's huge. So I, I, I was pretty sure that I was going to have a couple stories. I had reached out to some writers ahead of time at uh, relevant publications. So I knew that I was going to have some press. Um, but I don't think that, you know, just, I don't think that if, if you don't have, you know, a front page story or if your project's not going to be featured in Fast Company or something, that's not a reason not to do it. Um, it's just definitely a reason that if you, it's, it's all the more reason to kind of continue to do that prep work on the front end. Um, I know a lot of people that don't get press until you know they're in the middle of their campaign or they reach the right person. My my advice with press is to to ver to be very focused on finding the publications that are writing about exactly what you're doing. So a lot of people will think that they need to be in uh, the New York Times or the Atlantic or some of these major major publications, um, which I think. Is, is actually incorrect. Very rarely do those publications cover crowdfunding in general, unless it's a huge, huge campaign. It's very, it's much more powerful to actually get a, a blog or a, a, a blog that actually writes about specifically what you're doing, like say, um, you know, sustainable baking or gluten-free, you know, products. Yeah. Um, because all the people that read that blog, even though it might only have a readership of a few thousand people, they really care about gluten-free baking, and they will support your project. Um, and so you're actually reaching like a much more targeted audience that actually really cares, and they, all those people will probably share your project on Facebook, which is huge. So I really uh, encourage people when they talk about press to not focus on like what what they think are the big press outlets, but to actually think about how press fits with their project specifically and their story specifically and find the publications that are really, really writing about um, exactly what it is um, that they're doing. And this is this is actually a lesson I learned. I, I, I think I tried to go after too many big publications and should have been focusing much more on career websites and millennial websites, Gen Y websites. So now when I do, again, one of the more reasons why Indiegogo is great for testing my idea now when I'm actually, um, I'm preparing this spring to actually release my book and do the actual marketing campaign for my book, I'm going to focus much more on that because I learned through my crowdfunding campaign um, that it's better to focus on those smaller publications. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, start small, you know, aim high kind of stuff. Um, 
Mm -hmm. I, I definitely can see that. Um, I usually tell people both, you know, I mean, try for the big ones, but but at the same time, you you got to sure. go for those, those smaller ones because it all builds up and the more press is, is great press. Um, I just want to quickly say that if anybody out there who's listening, and we have a, a very nice amount of listeners out there, so thank you all for tuning in. If you have any questions, I invite you to put them in the comments section of the YouTube page, and uh, you know we can uh, we can get them over to Adam uh, in the next probably couple of minutes, and uh, and ask him your questions because you probably have just as many questions as I do. Um, but uh, I have one other question uh, that popped into my head because uh, you know a lot of this was talk about you know kind of promotion and how like thinking about all that stuff in the future. Uh, it, you know, or before the campaign launches to kind of figure out if it's right, it, how it impacts it. Um, did did a did perks play any role whatsoever in in whether or not the campaign or the, the this project, the book, would actually be uh, be good for it? I know you get, you definitely gave away the book as a as a major, perk, but did you have any other really awesome perks that you said in the vetting stage, perhaps? This is I can't wait to start just because I want to give give these perks away. Yeah, I would say that the perks are really important. Um, a lot of people have a great idea, um, but don't haven't really thought about how they're going to monetize the different levels of giving. Um, and the better the perks are, uh, the more the more money the campaign will raise, the more successful it will be. Um, at the end of the day, people actually want something. They want to support the idea. Uh, they want to support you as a as an artist um, or a creative, but they also want something in return. Um, I know I do when I support campaigns. I'm like, oh, I really want uh, I really want that toy, or I want that gadget, or I really want that book, or this movie looks awesome, um, and I want to meet the director. So yeah, perks for me was a little e is easier because I actually had a product. I was uh, giving the ebook and, and the the paperback copy of the book. But I also had a friend of mine who's an amazing um, artist design a letterpress poster, which I think is really cool. Um, and then I kind of wanted to bring the book alive through the perks. Um, so a lot, mm -hmm. several of my perks involve in-person um, coaching services or um, doing Google Hangouts with people to talk about you know their career change and some of the principles in the book. So I think um, a lot of times people actually really want to meet the creators of a project. Um, and it's really important to include those. If you're a filmmaker, or if you're a musician, you know, think about like having one of the perks be like, hey, you get to come out to the studio, or you get to have lunch with me, and and you know, go over my latest the lo the latest script. Because people actually really really want to have that in person connection. Don't 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 underestimate the fact that people love that stuff. Um, so I think that that those were huge for me. Um, and yeah, really think about how the perks. Um, how how the perks can really reflect the project. I think there's a sometimes a an instinct for people with crowdfunding campaigns to just make T-shirts or hoodies with like the logo, which is can be cool for certain projects, but like for my, like it doesn't necessarily work for all. So think really about like how you can make the book come alive. Like sorry, how you can make the project come alive with the perks. What is actually genuine to what you're giving that that you can have people pay different levels of money for. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of great insight there. Especially the, um, you know, again, we, we get so hung up on the social media world, um, and we we can sometimes forget that it's it's not just about you know this kind of engagement on a screen or uh, you know through a tweet, but you know when you can bridge the gap and really that you know get get as close to that firm handshake as possible. Uh, in real life, I mean, people. Number one, they'll pay for it, but in a sense, they're paying for something else. They're paying for 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 that involvement in your world. Yeah. As a creator. Exactly. Never underestimate that. Um, we've got yeah. some great questions coming in, so I'm going to jump right to those. Um, one question, which I thought was really interesting, uh, by by our listener named Philip, uh, he's asking about the commitment. What kind of a commitment? Uh, was was crowdfunding? I know you did mention that it, it was a lot of work, but but maybe you you know what kind of a real like commitment is is a successful campaign like for Quarter Life Breakthrough? You know, th this is gonna it's gonna vary obviously depending on the project. Um, like I said, some projects involve a very 
very heavy commitment. Um, I think all projects to a degree are a serious commitment no matter what. If you want to do a good job, it's going to take a lot of time um, and patience and hard work and dedication. Um, it depends on your fundraising goal. It depends on the scope of your project. Um, but I think no matter what, you have to be prepared to be committed. Um, and again, the big thing is when you do crowdfunding, suddenly it's, it's I'm taking something that I'm kind of you know, as a writer working on on my laptop, right, in the library, writing, and then putting it out to the world. So if you're not prepared to then be responsible to somehow to those people, you should think twice about whether you want to do a crowdfunding campaign. Wow. Um, because if... Say that again? No, no, I said wonderful. I love the way you worded that, but continue, please. Yeah, you know, so I, I, I think, you know, the, the commitment is you, you have this commitment to this, 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 uh, this community of people, um, this movement of people that you're building, this crowd of people. So, you know, you're going to put in whatever they demand and, you know, you, you have to take your commitment to the next level once you start to, to reach out beyond, uh, beyond yourself. Absolutely. Great. I, that definitely was, that definitely sounds like commitment to me, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> cool. We've got another, uh, another question here that just came in um, from uh, John. Uh, how many team members did you plan on having and did you have uh, during this campaign? Yeah, yeah, great question. Yeah, no, I had about uh, five or six team members. Um, I had a, you know, I'm obviously working uh, with an editor. Uh, on my book that also helped edit the, the copy on, on my page. Um, I work with a videographer and a photographer uh, to help put the campaign together, a social media strategist, um, and a couple kind of people um, helping spread the word. So again, that's going to depend on the nature of the project. I know some campaigns have teams of up to 10 or maybe even 15 people. Um, some are, you know, one or two or three person teams. Uh, so I think it should really depend on, on on your project and, and what you think you need, but the, the, the main issue here is don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, and don't be afraid to admit that um, you are have skills and talents in one area, but weaknesses in the other. And try to find people that can balance each other on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I, I'm not a huge, I, I, you know, I'm on social media, but it's not 100% my thing, which is totally fine as long as I find people to bring on that can help me with social media because social media is really important for crowdfunding. So you have to know what you're good at and know what you need. Excellent. Wow. That's totally agree on that. That's great. Six team members. That's that's a good amount. I had I had three. Um, and and in reality I had two. Um, <laughs> but I had three on the page, so that kind of you know that made me feel better even though a couple of the people weren't really working. Um, but you know got to get what you get, right? <laughs> um, this is great. Got another awesome question, a uh, pretty good question coming in from Richard. Um, and again, guys, all of you out there, thanks so much for listening. This has been great. Uh, this question is uh, about PR, advertising, trying to get on press, and uh, paid advertising. Did that come in as early as the vetting stage? Did you think about it? And then I, I would love to know, did you use something like paid advertising and did it work at all to help you out? Um, I personally did not use paid advertising. Uh, my, my campaign was, you know, uh, I, I think it depends on, on the audience and the project. I think that could, that could work for, for some campaigns. Um, I'll probably do some of that, obviously, with the, the, the launch of the book. Um, so I can't really speak to that. I know people that do. Um, I think it's really important to be to, uh, again, like I said, find press that, that reflects actually your project, be authentic to what you're doing, um, and, you know, come up with a PR strategy that makes sense, makes sense for, for the nature of the campaign. So for some campaigns, that's going to be paid advertising and Facebook ads and, you know, you know maybe even in, you know, paid advertising in other forms. But for others, I think word of mouth and finding... Um, you know, local press as well as, you know, blogs and websites that are really focusing on the niche that, um, you know, the gimmick, the angle, the niche, the shtick that you're doing um, is, is, will work just fine. Nice. So, uh, like, you know, I think the, the, the real message there is explore all options and do your research, do your homework, look into it, 
Um, a really easy way to do this is, depending on the nature of your project, reach out to other people that have done similar projects and ask what they did and ask what worked um, because then you can kind of learn from, learn from people that have been, uh, been in the trenches. That's great. Yeah, uh, it's, it's that research, you know, phase that really, I think, I think benefits uh, the, you know, figuring out whether or not it's right, for the, for whether or not your project is right for the campaign. So, uh, you know, and I, I, I always tell people, do your research constantly. Just, re, you know, touch base with people who've done those, those similar types of campaigns. And, and, yeah, find out what didn't work and what worked, and then, you know, the tough thing about finding out what worked is usually then you kind of have this tendency to copy a little bit, and, and that's, that's kind of a tough, uh, you know, that, that gets a little, a little bit tough there. But um, great, we got another couple of questions here, and I think we got room for two more quick questions before we got to call it a night, or a day actually, it's, uh, it's early over on the West Coast. Um, we have one from Tim. This kind of uh, falls in the realm of pre-launch, which we're going to be discussing uh, in, in two weeks, I believe, or I believe next week. Actually, next week we'll be uh, covering. But, uh, but, you know, it revolves around the pitch. Um, you had a pretty good pitch. Uh, what were some of the things that you thought about in doing your pitch video um, at that stage? Because I'm sure you kind of worked that into the, the beginning stages. Yeah, specifically talking about the video. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, first of all, um, video is essential. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the statistic is exactly, but I think, you know, something like videos, you know, you would know, John, but, uh, you know, <laughs> campaigns that have a video are infinitely more successful than ones that don't. So yep. um, even if it's a very, you know, low budget, just get, get, get your friend that has an, a camera to shoot it. Um, but I think the pitch, the really, I mean, this, this, to start with, be authentic, um, do what makes sense for you. Um, I think again, you said something about copying. Uh, it, a lot of uh, a lot of now these promo videos, pitch videos, whatever you want to call them, have that you know the cool animation where it's like <laughs> whatever. If that works for you, cool. But. I don't think it works for everyone, and I don't think every cool campaign needs to have like a fancy animated video. Mm -hmm. um, so even if you're mm -hmm. just talking in front of the camera, like that, if that's if that works for you, do that. So so be authentic to your story and what you're what you're doing. Um, if you can show um, whether it's a narrative form um, or you can show your product in some way, that's really really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be able to. Even if though I, want, even though I haven't didn't have the book finished yet because I was raising money to write it, I wanted to show what the final product would generally was going to look like so that people could see that. So that you know, basically, I had a you know a, a mock up of the cover and show that it's a book that it was going to be available in different formats. So if you can show what people will get from the perks and what your money is going towards, I think is really important. Um, trying to keep it pretty short is uh, is I think a, a good always good. People's attention spans are shorter than we think they are, um, and again, it depends on the story. If if you're ra if you're m raising money for a, a movie, you know you probably want the movie to look really good <laughs> and to reflect the the actual script or to be done professionally yeah. because you know I'm supporting a filmmaker, right? Mm -hmm. um, if I'm supporting a product, um, I want to be able to see the product and see that you or your team knows how to build a good product. Um, so again, be be true to the uh, be true to the campaign and true to what you're what you're doing. Oh man, wonderful advice! And you know, for instance, I yeah, I kind of worked on my script for my video uh, for at least a few weeks, if not almost you know more than a month. I mean, not you know not every day, but kind of uh, going over different drafts. So I took a lot of time because I wanted to get the message really really done right. That's excellent. So again, that takes time. Yeah, and I definitely encourage everybody to take a look uh, on Indiegogo at um, Quarter Life Breakthroughs Campaign and check out this pitch video and see what Adam's talking about right there. Um, so yeah, no, it's great. Um, one one other question, and then uh, and then we'll probably be cutting uh, cutting out for today. Uh, are you vetting a new project for Indiegogo? <laughs> Um, current, currently, no. Um, but you know, I, I got to finish my first one first. Um, obviously, I got I have 
you know, I had 500, I had 518 people um, support my campaign, the, the, my first campaign. Um, so I'm indebted to them, and I want to get the book to them as soon as possible. So once I do that um, and get this first book done, I'll start thinking about the next one. But no, my priority is is uh, one major project at a time, and I'm going to take care of this one. And uh, should I do another project, I will definitely use Indigo in the future, but not not quite yet. I'm going to get the first one done first. That's excellent, and we love to hear that. Believe me, and uh, and we also love to hear that you are working on on fulfilling your perks and and making sure your yeah. your 500 plus funders are 100 percent happy so that they come back and they support exactly. you here and again all the time. Adam, thank you so much for all of this. This has been wonderful. My Everybody pleasure. out there who's been listening. Feel free to put your comments in the comments section. We will be responding to those. Um, and and you know, just if you have other questions, I'm sure maybe you can always reach out. Um, yep. Please, guys, join us uh, next week. We're going to have uh, Mike Mowry on on the. Uh, well, I was going to say on the set, but I'm not on the set. I'm 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 always on a film set in my head, so. Um, but we're going to have Mike Mowry of Misery Signals joining us here at the Indiegogo Google Hangout talking about pre-launch, so you don't want to miss it. Get here, 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Have a great day, and crowdfund your life. Take care. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you.